drop on top of them and dissuade them from walking into the objective. Well, it all comes down to this, right? Because game three, this is where you get the series lead, series point here for either Top Esports or WE. It's been a good one so far. I don't know, a lot of fans out there. As we see. Oh, the dabbing man, they keep bringing back. <laughs> well, as I was saying, the fans would be going, hang on, WE, good start to the series, but Top Esports finally fighting back means we're at the stalemate here. One that will be broken by this third game. Let's jump onto the rift once again for very different compositions once more here in game three. Yeah, we've seen three different game, like compositionally, we've seen three completely different games. This time TS opting into this front to back team fight and WE just going back to their mid game strength. I really want to see if WE can get Teacher Mod to start influencing side lanes. Of course, you're going to have pressure from Morgan early on, so even he can try and hover towards mid, help unlock Teacher Mod from the lane, and head towards these dragon fights. Also, I want to note that Jackie Love has gone for Comet once again. Good thing to track here for Jackie Love. So, two Lethality Virus games in a row, but. Uh, I said this a little bit in the early game of last game, but what we've seen here in the LPL is like with the LeBlanc virus, the Zoe virus, even the Syndra virus, we see that pairing being so potent. You get locked down by one scout of the week and a, a virus arrow comes flying through after that and you're essentially dead or left out of the fight. The thing I love about it is if you can have a good wave control, get on the objective first and set up that vision, it's so dangerous for the enemy team to walk into, even one member walking into a choke point, like you just said, scatter the weak into an arrow, you're pretty much dead. Yeah, a different dynamic with 369 in the top lane. Just start with junglers though, because on the top side, Karst spotted out on his red buff starting there, crossing all the way to blue while Face Young still hovering towards his top side. If you're Karsa, you are not going to pay any attention towards the top lane. Oh, Jackie Love. Ouchies. That's uh, the Halo Blades Callista for it. I was going to say, this is what Callista does. Has such a strong level one. And when you have <sighs> such a strong support matchup, you can even just start your rend, went out in these extended trades. And you see how much damage she has. They're just getting zoned off the wave, but Karsa not even going to be able to look for an option to get into this lane with Beishong heading bot as well. I mean, I guess it was expected here from Jackie Love. He started corrupting potions, so nothing like the Carl, nothing like a Doran shield. Just straight into the sustain here with the potions available. So Jackie Love falls back in the wave while Beishong now moving towards the bottom side himself. He talked about Karsa, of course, he's not going to find his way in, so he moves all the way up and is going to keep clearing. Yep, and Rumble will have an early a uh, hard time in this lane early on. Of course, Syndra is ranged. Very hard to just walk forward and use your Flame Spitter on her when she can just use Scatter the Weak to push you away. Good tracking here on Kasa. Yet again, spotted out by another WE ward. Jomong and missing and moving. Kasa can actually just hop over the wall here, so he should be fine. He's been collapsed on. Oh, he does use the ward, excuse me. But there you go, hop over the ward, and Scuttle Crab now going to be contested. Yunji are actually going to take the undertow. Beishong has a blue buff, so mana's going to come through. The door is up. Karsa now joining the fight, but the dazzle's there. Jackie Love doesn't use the flash. Maybe a bit of disrespect is going to cost him as the rend is available. Joe Mung forward. He goes and gets first blood. The knockdown here with the concussive blows means it is a trade. And Knight coming down means it could be pretty dangerous. As here we go again. The dazzle only hits one, and that's not enough. Karsa with two kills. And we saw when that started that in a straight up 3v3 or 4v4 in the early stages of the game, WE does come out ahead. Jomon going so far forward for that kill though, does end up equalizing it and missing, trying to follow up, make sure he doesn't die. Just gives another one over to TS coming out from Yu Yanja's passive. Massive wave to push through. Okay, Yu Yanja is just like, I'm gonna put the wave in a good position here for the cost of most of my life. Jackie Love, you're talking about good positions after that one, getting the shove through here as well. Yep, I love this from TS, ensuring that bounce back so they're going to be in a good state once they return to this lane. Here we see Beishong running forward, and we see all the damage coming out from WE early on. Aren't able to land the stun onto Yuyanja, but still they get it on Jackie Love. He has to flash away, but Jomung going so aggressive right there. Now look, Missing and Jomung are both in lethal for yeah. TS. And very easy for them to find both kills. Now, I know, you know, for Joe Mung, maybe, maybe he didn't have to do that. But I tell you what, he's coming out of his shell here in playoffs. Like, Joe Mung fighting that first blood. That's a bit of a surprise. We saw him play like this a lot early on in the split. 
typically wouldn't work out as well as it been during playoffs. Yeah. But uh, since playoffs have started, he's typically known his limits very well and does come out on top of those exchanges. Well, even though he picked up first blood, Vampire Accepted picked up here. He's returned to lane and picked up CS2. You know what's massive, though? Mm. Right now, Karas has completed his jungle item and has two long swords. So any mid jungle, top jungle 2v2 is going to be favored for TS. Lyric, you know what's upsetting? It's not finished just yet. It's just the two long swords. Almost warriors, though. Yep. But further to your point, the two long swords are going to make a, bis a bit of difference here as he spotted out an award that's been placed by Morgan. Yeah. And like you just said, this changes the, the dynamic of any 2v2 or 3v3 on the map. Karsa should always come out ahead. Yeah. But this ward spot the map actually leads to WE being able to threaten for the dragon. Knight's going to hover over, but it doesn't look like it means anything. Looking for a scout of the week. Missing just dodges away from that one, so easy done. As Yu Yanja comes forward a little bit, Jomung unable to follow that one. Otherwise, could have been pretty bad. So Ocean Dragon to start the game off. Overall, very good for WE because they need to stack four dragons. We've already said this is the early mid-game composition that needs to snowball. Also, a nice thing is you do see Cloud Drake coming up next, so it does set up the possibility of an Infernal Soul. Yeah. So that's something you'd really love to get, and 369 now just going to push out this wave. Has already bought the Sheen, so... Uh, gonna go towards that that Iceborne Gauntlet. Oh, we don't like Iceborne though, do we? We I think don't. The community consensus is his worst item. It's just you just rather have the upgraded amount of health as compared to the mana. True. Sure. Iceborne Gauntlet's good when you're faced against an all AD composition, though. Of course, just getting that extra armor always nice. The majority of it, WER, bar the rumble. I would also say once you get past laning phase, like your 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 trade and your play pattern doesn't set you up to consistently, you know, use the proc of that item. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Uh, so, well, you're gonna see it anyway, so we're gonna have to deal with it. But at least in this lane, I mean, three six nine already bullying out Morgan to an extent. I mean, the good thing though is right, you are at least facing a triple AD comp. All of the magic damage is gonna be coming out from Teacher Ma. Yeah. Hey, uh, Castle from the bottom side of this map. I think this ping's going down. Maybe yeah. a gut feeling? Did, no, did he walk over a ward? He didn't. I mean, look, we see that Beishong is invading Karsa's topside jungle. Okay. So, really, with some deduction skills, you can figure out where he's likely to be. So, great job coming out of WE's bot lane. Now disappearing back into the mid river here. Level 6 on Beishong. Knight, gonna have to scatter the weak someone. Unleashed power is available here. Onto the mid rumble, Karsa, to finish him off. That went. Really the wrong way for top esports. Oh, sorry, for WE, I should say. And this is what happens when you draft something like a Syndra Lee Sin, right? Very easy to hit that CC, give an easy time for Lee Sin to get in there, and they find the kill for on to Teacher Ma. And we've seen that this is when WE struggles. Even during the regular split, when these two teams faced up against each other, we saw once WE, when Teacher Ma was forced onto the, onto the Diana. Cool. Hang on, we're crisping up night here. Equalizer, flash, the burn not enough. He didn't have any mana, so Teacher Mark came in guns blazing. Still great job to force that flash from Knight. Not going to be able to play as aggressively in the lane, but with Karsa consistently shadowing, is still going to make it all right to try and do that. And Karsa's big. Actually going to be spotted on the Warden back, going to be stopped here as well. You got a quick replay in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Karsa now going to be backing once again, while Beishang, who has had a bit more control of objectives this game, is going to pick up the Herald. Yeah, Bei Shang just whenever he sees Karsa do something on the map, does head to the other side and picks up the objective. So great job of getting Herald. This comp does really need this to try and turn it into some kind of objective lead. And you didn't lose out on any CS or experience in any lanes. Bei Shang there, you're talking CS, just through the jungle. Bei Shang has a level lead at the moment over Karsa, but Warrior's Chant completed here for the Lee Sin. He's also got that extra long sword in hand now as well. Bei Shang, funnily enough, has also gone Warriors on the Olaf. We don't actually see that that much anymore. No, we do typically see a lot of teams going towards that Cinder Hulk now, but I think just trying to snowball your advantage is the right call. Once it gets to the mid and late game, your team comp, it'll be very hard to come out ahead regardless. And we even see now, right? Teacher Ma's not able to actually move with this Rumble, drop the equalizers like you'd want. Knight is just keeping him in lane. And TS are just executing where they're stronger. They're like, hey, we know we're better laners than you. We're going to capitalize where we know we're best. Especially around Knight, right? It's always a game plan for top esports. They rely on their savior Knight. It's been as consistent as any other season. And now this savior is going to be picking up the blue buff, who 
Also note he also has Luden's Echo firmly on the way. 20 CS lead over Teacher Mark. Morgan with some really good trades. 3, 6, 9. Not going to be able to sustain that much. He's out of refillable potions here, so... Trying to fight back where he can. Good Searing Charge. Casa is up here. The wave is pushing into Morgan, though, so he doesn't need to play this too aggressively. He's got an award. Dominus used. Morgan realizes late the kick flash comes through. The ultimate misses, though. And now Morgan trying to buy some time. Looking for the sustain. Sonic Wave Resonating Strike heals it up. Here oh. comes the Searing Charge, but not in time. Morgan gets away. Yeah, that missed ult from 369 was really massive. That looked like a guaranteed kill. Morgan even disrespecting when we saw Karsa show on the ward, but this allows W to go to the other side of the map once again, like they've consistently been doing. The Callista lane is picking up turret plating. Bei Shang says, here's daddy. Here comes the Rift Herald, dropping down. They're just making the right move, building up that full work, then dropping the Herald down, so gonna get some plate gold. But Knight is here, so W not gonna be able to follow up on anything. We're watching the play that we just watched. Again, yes, we are. At a boy, let's watch the play a third time. Uh, keep your eyes on the bottom side, though. This feels like it's brewing. Things are going down. Well, this is great because Knight moving over to cover bot lane actually gave Teacher Mount finally a window to push out his lane and move over towards the dragon first. And all of WE are here. Morgan does have TP. 369 doesn't. This thing has ulti, but it's going to heal Ooh, through a bunch of that. The chunk comes through. TP coming through. Equalizer down as well. Teacher Mount in the thick of it with Morgan joining in. That could be it. WE had the numbers, and they had the advantage. Now, Beishung picks up blood. And TES were doing their job early on, keeping Teacher Mount locked in the mid lane, but still, they finally found a window onto Dragon. Teacher Mount moved over first. Morgan having the TP advantage, completely capitalizing on top esports. That was nicely done. I know we're going to get a replay, so I'm going to wait for that one. But WE now with the gold lead. You talked about tempo and momentum here in this game. As 3-6-9's getting zoned out of the turret, you'll just have to walk away. Still, though, on the side of TS, you actually aren't, you aren't even 1k gold down. Yep. So you're not really in a dire position. You still do scale up quite well with the Orn. But we saw this from Game 2 from Top Esports, where they were on a timer themselves. Now, for WE, we are going to be watching for the next 10, 15 minutes, see how this game develops. But at least a good start. People might look and say, okay, but why? TS have a Lethality Varus. Why do they win in these late game fights? Mm. But it all comes down to kind of formations and how comps play out, right? Because on the side of TS, you do have a proper front, middle, and back line. It's going to be very easy to keep WE's damage at bay, especially when it is very uh, cooldown based, especially coming out from people like the Renekton and the Rumble. You're putting a lot on Joe Mung's shoulders in the late game. Especially the Tarek as well, right? Like, yeah. we can see how Tarek can be fickle in some of these fights. If Missing has to preemptively use the ultimate, that's kind of it for the engages. Knight's still winning this lane too, remember, so teach him up. <laughs> All Knight needs to do is press R and he's dead. And Tarek does best also when champions are coming into him, so you can keep auto attacking, you know, lowering your cooldowns, but TS don't need to go into him. They have a Varus, they have a Lethality Varus, and they have a Syndra. They can play the range game. And the chances that someone dies before he's able to ult is very high here in this game. Uh, turret plating is disappearing, ladies and gentlemen. You can see Top B Sports send Knight in for one more hit at the turret before he backs away for this Ludens Echo slash Hextech GLP. Echo. And, and we want to see WE go towards the Rift Herald once again. Again, they need to keep snowballing this map state. TS doing a good job not giving a bit, not giving Beishong a way of ganking this lane. But I want to see Karsa just committing to trading and playing for his bottom lane. Where is he? He's moving down there now. Is he going to be in time? Well, yes, because Beishong is not committing to the play. Things are going down towards mid. Ooh, and Karsa's already here. <laughs> Sonic Wave going to connect. Bei Shang. I mean, can he take the 1v1? Maybe, no. but it's not a 1v1. It's a 2 versus 1. Ragnarok burns. And that's it. And even Yu Yanja following up. And now... Next corruption. Here we go. The knock up there. The Cosmic Radiant's not in time. Joe Mung just going to drop. I love that punishing the mistake from Joe Mung. The other thing I was going to point out is that 369's TP is about to come up. So once again, if your TS just force on the bottom side of the map, start getting Jackie Love rolling and say, okay, you know what, your Renekton's getting ahead. It doesn't matter. We have an Orn. He's still going to be useful in later stages of the game. 
to finally get his kill. As the top esports gold back to dead even. That's a good sign. A minute 30 to Mountain Soul. Or Mountain Dragon, sorry. That will actually lead to the Mountain Soul. WE. Yeah, but TS right now might just rotate towards the Herald. Their bottom turret is close to going down anyway, so it really doesn't matter if WE do pick that up. A great chance of corruption coming out from Jackie Love, changing, chaining that into Yu Yanja's ultimate, and then Jackie Love just going in and getting that kill. Cool. He needed that as well. I mean, that was a 0-2 start to the game, right? That could have been uh, a pretty rough turn of events going into the mid-game, but now finally get some gold in his back pocket. But I love that TS are just deciding. Uh-oh. Here comes Call the Forge God. Teach him up. Ult was already used by Knight. He's going to get healed up thanks to missing four members. Ooh. Group up, scout of the week, connects again. And down he goes. Jackie with another one. And there's the poke we're talking about. And Jackie loves so on point with those arrows. And what I was going to say is I love that TS are just going for this top half of the map. That turret was pretty much gone. It wasn't, it was like fake security that it was even there, right? WE yeah. would at any time be able to send over members to take it. And TS not only getting Harold, getting a kill, also getting this mid lane turret opens up so many options on the map. This game is top esports, controlling the dynamic for now. Joe Mung was able to push in that bottom turret, push up the wave with it as well. The top esports taking that mid turret, as you mentioned. Well, that'll open up the dynamic towards Dragon too. Yeah, and we do have that coming up. Knight did go push the top side. He still, still does have TP up. But still, WE are going to commit more members to mid first, so they're going to be able to actually get first track onto the Dragon. Cast is moving down, though. This is the 4 one lease in with Black Cleaver. 369 has found Morgan out on the rotation. Sonic Wave, Chains of Corruption, locks down the Renekton as Carter now trying to get towards the pit. Morgan flashes towards it. And now, the rest of them are getting engaged on, I mean, WE here, relying on Bay Shum. But even he has to flash away the Ignite down onto Carter. Won't tick him over. Four members standing in front of this one, and it's just been zoned away. And this has been great from TS because, one, Knight wasn't even here. He had to recall and TB back to the mid lane. Tijima also not able to find a window in. So great CC coming down from 369 to kind of zone them off. And then Karsa following it up with all the damage. Sure, you got no kills, but you ended up getting the dragon. And if you can stack up four of these drakes, we see how unkillable Orn is. Ooh, flush away from Tijima as well. This is not looking good for WE. And it's not going to get any easier. That's right. I mean, we look at this in game two and game three, top esports have found their footing in the series, right? Game one looks so damn good. And since then, we've kind of gone down a bit. Well, let's even take a step back to game one in the mid game. We were, it looked like TS had solid map control. We're playing the True. map very well in this 1 3 1. And then some really confusing plays. Like this, even. I mean, Unleash Power, Scout of the Week, Teach him up. you just flashed. What do you expect? Yeah, Knight just, once again, all three games doing so well. Once he gets into a side lane, finding this pressure, realizing, hey, I'm really good on the Syndra. I'm going to take this away. This is good into all of Teacher Mouse champions. Castle almost saying yoink. I remember he has Rift Herald in hand as well. That top turret sitting there won't be for long. You're not even necessarily going to need it for this push. True. Baishung is walking up now. He does have the Ragnarok available. Still no ult on Syndra. May looks like it'd be really difficult to actually pull off this dive. Okay. Meanwhile, Jack Love and Yu Yanjia sitting towards mid lane with 369, making the rotation as well. It's a long journey here for Top Esports who do have a gold lead at this point. And now definitely going to have 1k in their back pocket. I absolutely love that 369 has made his way up. You have no reason to stay sitting in the bot lane. You got it to a neutral state. Renekton's not really going to have any pressure on that turret. And now you can look for picks with Call of the Forge God. Seems it's getting easier and easier here for top esports. And if we talk about expectations here in this series, a lot of people thought towards top, or top esports, excuse me. But teach them are here again. Your hands are going in the air, kick into the wall, sonic wave. And Knight says thank you. Teleport's going to come in. Dazzle, he's under the turret, so Castle will be traded away. At least there is a response. Yeah, they do get that kill for kind of the greed that TS showed. I was actually thinking they dropped the Herald at the same time to kind of give more safety to that dive. Didn't do it. Carson does go down, but still feels like TS are the ones controlling the map. And they still have the Herald. The only thing you'd say that's good is that Teacher Mars worth no gold at this point. None. Zero. I mean, zero and five. And the dynamic of WE is if Teacher Mars not doing well, then the rest of WE aren't. It's missing. Forced the flash out of Yu Yanja thanks to the Fate's call. At least there's a play to be made. Pushing top turret here is still going to be a decent trade. 
right? You're still going to get some gold in your pockets, and that's what matters. It might not translate into any tangible map pressure. And now Jackie Love TPing back on the map. They're going to be able to get river control and start getting some vision onto this Baron. Yeah. But still, we don't expect to see any cheeky Baron plays come out from these comps. Lethal, Tempo, Varus, and Asyndra. Sure, we do have a Callista on the other side, but your Rumble is massively behind. Um, do we look to... Hang on. I've got to pause. Because Knight's just waiting for a flank. Do we still have more time on WE's comp? We still Because we're hitting those almost two items, right? So we should be getting at a point where they are kind of getting towards their struggle. To me, it's going to take a real big misstep coming out from TS, someone walking forward. W are going to need to some way find tempo on the map, probably through Morgan pushing in a side lane, or even just doing something like we see him here now, waiting in the red pit, looking for this kind of cheeky numbers advantage play. Yeah. But a lot right now is on the shoulders of Bay Shang and Morgan being able to get on top of Knight and Jackie Love, which you not only have the scatter, scatter of the week, Chains of Corruption, Braum Ultimate, Call the like think about it, you have so many tools Everything. to keep the members of WE off of. Bay Shang is the one who has the most gold here. 369 building right in front of Joe Mung with the disrespect. Uh 3 0 and 1 with the Black Cleaver. I mean Bay Shang does the most damage here alongside Morgan. Uh, not true. Probably Joe Mung here with the Renance Hurricane now picked up, but meanwhile. While I'm talking, Knight's in the bottom lane, just taking gold. Yeah, so he's going to push his wave out. We do expect him to see, to see him rotating towards the mid lane. They're going to go into WE's red side jungle, get some vision set up for this dragon, and then if WE ever walk in, they can just lay down so much poke. I want to note that Jackie Love got his upgraded item there. The Yomus became the Miyus as we look towards top eSports. Still just grouping up. If anyone gets locked down, they're pretty much gone. I hear a Yomu's. Okay, kick flash. Nicely done from Kaz. Teach him off. That's not good. Cosmic Radiant is going to come through as well. And WE, four members invulnerable. Fate's Call going to be used yet again as Morgan has to disappear. Poke comes out missing. Saved. The top now just grouping on up and poking them down even further. And that is such a huge mistake coming out from Teach You know they're controlling your red side jungle. You've got to take the safe path around. This opens up Karsa taking the, the dragon all by himself. And now TS are going to be able to take this mid inner turret. Such convincing play from Ooh. top eSports. Look at Morgan, though. Okay. The flank has potential, but look how far back 369 <laughs> yeah. is. That's a. It looked pretty exciting at first, but didn't end up being too exciting. We have an Orn and a Brom who are going to be getting four mountains at this point. As Unleashed Power, there goes Jackie Love. This one is in the bin, I would say, as 369 is going to zone the way, but a good equalizer means that we pull it out of the rubbish for now. 369 with the zone, as they're going to be turning on this Orn. Callista gets a couple of Ren stacks in, and he's at half health now, but the poke continues to come through. Undertow for the slow chains, corruption misses from top esports. I've got to say, that equalizer from a 0 6 Rumble. Still did some work. It was in a great place, but we saw it didn't really do much damage. Still, the fact that WE just don't get mauled in the fight right now, I'd say is a huge win. And I want to be crystal clear, while I'm excited that Top Esports are showing this better play, right, from Game 2 and Game 3 onwards, they are being more convincing here in this series. But WE, this is still, again, felt like the gameplay has gone down, especially from Tichamara in this third game. As you look at the comparison on your screen, I mean, that's now a Magi's picked up as the technical third item. I don't even know if it's necessarily the gameplay of WE has gone down, but right, think? we see Teacher Ma playing not only potentially the best mid laner, right? We're going to leave that argument for another day, neither do we, okay. but still potentially the best player in LPL. A lot of people had his name in that discussion last year, and Teacher Ma's still a rookie. So he, yep. we haven't seen him really get any help from Beishong. Karsa has played around that lane so heavily, and we would just expect Knights to come out on top. It is good game plan from top esports, right? There's Joe Monk. Oh, no. Yes, that's how this works. Now, Karsa going to be caught out. WE at least getting a trade here with the Undertow to finish it off. And Beishong, yes, on a Rampage 2. There's Morgan in a flanking position. Going to be spotted out by 369. Top Esports are backing away. Yu Yan Jia sends out the Glacial Fisher with a call. The Forge God, one of the most fed member, dead to Jackie Love. Missing flashes over the wall, but can they escape with the Winter's Bite? The Cosmic Radiance Teacher Ma needs to get in. But it's just about missing, trying to survive here. As Teacher Ma won't as well. Scatter the Week kills him. 
And this one, definitely over. And I don't know why W were even looking for that flank. What is Morgan doing now? You have to say. You just lost your AD carry. The rest of your damage is so, again, conditional. You you have one rotation of spells. Teacher Mouth pretty much only has Equalizer. You still have Syndra and Varus up on the side of TS. Again, no idea what W is doing. Now, Top East was just going to go towards Baron. 25 minutes in, and it feels like match point on the way. Ooh, going to peel off knowing that W are heading over. Again, their comp is not very fast at burning Baron. No. We have a Syndra, we have a Lethality Varus. Morgan, mid lane, going to be dodging away from Transcription. Nice pull of the trigger. I just love how willing Jackie Love is to use this ultimate off cooldown, realizing, hey, it's not too long of a cooldown at that. Two. Just consistently being willing to look for picks. Thumbs up. Now seven and two, by the way. He was zero and two earlier in this game. He's picked up seven kills straight. So there's a very big virus who has hit his third lethality item. Also note that Knight went back for a needlessly large rod and a blasting one. Has 19 stacks on the Magi's now. They're right like the now, roaming death squad, aren't they? Like yes. Knight, Knight and Jackie love like the roaming death squad this game. They, they, it's kind of like the whole team is in a sense, right? Because we always see Yu Yanja right next to them. Even 369 knows, hey, my job is not to pick up farm in the side lane. I always need to be with my team, have this potential to open up the Call of the Forge God and take out one of the members of WE. I'd right. say roaming death squad is fair. Okay. Let's say if you don't oh. agree with that, that's fine. This is a bruiser, by the way. Run, Morgan, run. Look at Knight. He's got a blue buff. Oh, no. The Flash comes forward. He tried. i got to say, that was pretty good. The Flash Whoa. matched by Knight. Golden in time. Can Knight get it? Yes, he can. But Morgan played that as best as he could. I mean, Knight is just so far ahead right now. Now up to 23 stacks on his Magi's. And TS going to feel great. Ooh. The WE going forward on top of Knight. They're going to find the kill. A reprieve with the ultimate down from Rumble. Yu Yanja flashes away. Stand behind me on top of Jackie Love. Joel Mung at half health. Chains Corruption lands, fall the Forge God down, enabling the rest of top esports as WE have to back away in the end. Knight getting punished for flashing forward aggressively to finish Morgan off in that trade. Doesn't have a Zanya, so not able to buy time, but still, TS feel fine just sitting in front of this turret. They have the damage, they have the siege, they have the peel. And now we have the next dragon coming up in 15 seconds, but Morgan has TP and yep. Knight does not. Ooh, okay, okay, and Morgan's up. Knight in 15 seconds. Yeah, having a look at that play one, once again, it was fancy footwork, but again, we saw it on screen. I'm going to guess that WE don't have Knight's uh, TP timer right because they're not moving over to contest this dragon, just saying, hey, TS can have it. This is going to be the third mountain. Once again, this is just going to make Yu Yanja and especially 369 <laughs> unkillable. This is 18%. 18% MR and armor. So that Iceborne is going to be paying off alongside the Sunfire 400. Cable. 400. Yeah. Oh, boy. Now, I said the best Orn in the league. Did you hear me yesterday, Lyric? Yes. I said the best said Orn Aldi. is Audi, right? Yeah. I'm going to leave with, I'm going to leave that there until EDG maybe lose. Yeah. I don't, I don't think 369 has been you I know, like the greatest Orn, but he's just played it well. He's done his job this yeah, game, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. So I can agree with that. Different we, situations. We don't need to give away any Orn trophies this game. But doing his job knowing, hey, we are not about this 1-3-1 this or this 4-1. It's all about grouping up as a five-man unit. And even when someone needs to pick up farm in the side lane, it's all about Knight. And Knight's so strong right now, he can pretty much 1v1 anyone. Yeah. He's level 17 over Teacher Mask 14. Ooh, just even Bayshon uh -oh. being level 12. Does he have Ragnarok available? He does, doesn't use it. Goes golden here with the Unleashed Power, which is good. The Pope comes through Ooh. anyway, and Jackie Love almost takes him down. They're going to be speeding away with the help of Shirelia's Reverie, but all that zoning means Top Esports have River Priority again. Just think about these last two games. Knight and Jackie Love on the same team has been so scary. Do you remember what we said? The Divine 3. And Carter has kind of been helping to enable them along with 369. So. For top esports now on top of the Baron. You're looking at Knight and Jackie Love to burst them out before WE get near. Can they pull off what seems impossible here in game three? I would say no. But we'll see. Call the Fort God for the turn. Equalizer's good on top of Caster, but Fates Call used as Caster goes in. Kick Flash on top of Teachamar. WE finds the first kill. The second one goes over as well. The third here. 
for WE. This time, the Tarot Gold team was on point. I was going to say, I'm completely wrong. They actually separate the members of TES. Oh, Knight still near the pit. WE need to cut this one out well. 369 jumps in. The Dazzle going to be Bellows Threat. Knight has enough mana. Unleash power on top of Morgan. Doesn't kill him here. But the Syndra has the AoE. One knockup, one scout of the week comes through. Knight running out on mana, but the Baron is going down. WE are low. They need the Baron. They secure it. Now they turn for the fight. On oh, Knight, he's dead. 369 as well. And Top Esports had this game in the bag no longer. I don't even know how we got into this position. Front to back team fights are so easy for TS to win. WE doing a great job of splitting them up. And like you said, Missing have an amazing Tarek ulti. And then they have the Kalista. So very easy for them to hop around that Baron. Knight had no mana. And here, let's take a look again. TS are the ones to force this with the Baron. Open call the Fortune God. And there we see it. Teacher Moss Equalizer forcing Knight away. Karsa going in, just getting. 1v1 by Tichima, and then the rest of TS are left in such an awkward position, they're able to get right on top of Jackie Love, and the Equalizer paying huge dividends. For the 1-8 and eight Rumble, that was his first kill of the game he got. And a big thing was Knight didn't have Flash, right? So yep. now he can Flash over that and join his team. Still going to be hard for WE to actually use this Baron. They are going to be able to get some side lane pressure with the Renekton. But now the name of the game is this last dragon. Well, okay. potentially last dragon. Okay. So the main thing for me is that how far top esports were ahead. You thought that Baron was going to seal the deal, but WE at least finding it, showing us that they're not out of this yet. This game goes on, and as Knight sells the Magi's, picks up a Rabadons. As you mentioned, this last dragon in a minute twenty. We'll see what WE can do in the sideline. Yeah, going to force the members of TS to rotate around the map, so they're going to be able to pick up this one. But again, we're going to get to the point where this game is going to be decided by one big team fight. And once again, we're going to need to see WE separate the members of TS, because if they do get that formation, we've seen time and time again they come out on top. So Teacher Mall going to have to have a clutch equalizer, and Missing going to have to be really on point with those Tarek ultimates. A lot of standing gold here, as you can see, though. The outer turret going down in the mid lane. I'm just so surprised. It's a gold lead here for WE. I mean, I know, it's I know, surprising but... they got the Baron, but yeah. after the Baron being able to pick up some of these... I don't really it's, know... It's this next fight that really turns your opinion though, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Because 30 seconds, and still, those ornaments have gone out across the rift here. There's only a locket to be sending towards Yu Yanjia, and he should have that as the Orn hits level 17. And TS are going to be able to get Vision on the Dragon first. They're all here already. WE coming off their backs. Teleport coming in. 25 seconds left of Baron. Poke still massive here from top esports. So keep your eyes on Bei Shang this fight. He is the member that is massive for WE. Okay, good scout of the week though. On to missing to start off. Bei Shang, you mentioned, going to be taking away Cass's uh, Edge of Night Shield. It's Morgan walking through the brush. A scout of the week onto missing yet again. But they want those 80 carry, that mid laner here on the side of top esports. WE get river priority. Call the forward god comes through. The fight begins here on to missing. Bait score going to be used preemptively. Top esports still able to push them away. Missing on the wrong side. Dodged away from the sonic wave. Poke comes through from Jackie Love Chains. Corruption flashed away from. Slowed on down. Morgan here. Targeted. Yeah, now, once again, we have this front-to-back formation. TS should feel good. Oh, here's Carson spotted out. There's going to be Cole the Meek yet again. Morgan is chasing this jungler. Meanwhile, WE in the river, left with a four versus four. Sonic Wave resonates right. They kick flash backwards. Morgan has to respond as well. The poke doesn't connect here. On an edge hit with Bay Shunk, scatter the week again. And the equalizer is still up. This will be kind of the last big element trying to separate TS. Trying to poke down Baekhyun, get rid of that GA. Dragon begins on the side of top esports. Morgan in with a flank, but look towards Mystic. The Searing Charge doesn't connect from 369, but he's tanky enough. Another scatter of the week. There goes the Equalizer on top of top esports. Morgan's still not in the fight. Dominus there with Dragon secured. They have a Mountain Shield. Morgan just sat at the back and was waiting for something, but I don't know. Meanwhile, Joe Mung is trying hard to carry this one, but that's it, Mountain Shield secured at the end of the fight for top esports. Like we said, Hysterics, Teacher Mask Ultimate needed to separate the members of TS. It didn't do that. Put it just together. sat in front of them. Yeah, put them together, just kind of zoned them out. And they're like, fine, we'll take this dragon. Joe Mung on the wrong side of the rift. Meanwhile, though, and 
Okay. He's going to get a bit of movement speed. That's nice. The extra tenacity you get from the Mercurial Simtop. Okay. And now he's dead. Unleashed power. Not available. Can you Ooh. take him down? Yes, yes, you can. Four people here. Watch the poke. How quick does he die? Didn't even see him come back. As that's a big shutdown. And Top Esports again to reiterate. The Mountain Soul now in hand. I was ready for Joel Mung's adventure story. Traversing the map, getting back home. But sadly didn't happen. Didn't happen. But we got a fight that I think really needs to be explained. Lyric, you're up. Again, TS just do such a good job of staying in their formation. We see Morgan looking for the flank, but watch this equalizer coming out. It forces TS together. They feel fine with this. You have a Braum, you have an Orn, they stand in front. Morgan left in a really awkward position. The rest of his team already left down low. We see Knight and uh, Jackalove just kiting around the back. Karsa and Yuyanja getting right on top of Morgan. Jackalove de dealing the damage necessary. Everyone leaves Joe when they say, hey, it doesn't matter. He doesn't deal enough damage. We can go kill him later. And they come out on top. I mean, you look at that play as well. Missing was poked out by the elements of top esports so that when Cosmic Radiance came down, he was dead before the ulti went off. Right. Like, the simple name of the game is, if TF stay together as a five-man unit, they should come out on top. WE need to find a way to break that formation, but that is really hard with the tools they have available and really depends on either some kind of massive flank from Morgan or a great equalizer coming out right in the middle of the team for Teacher Bob. Jackie Love has teleported into dangerous members, but never mind, because Knight almost kills Bay Shunk. Unleashed power has been used, but so is he call the Forge God. Teacher Bob dodges that one and a peculiar 36 minute game on our hands. I mean, we've already had other peculiar oh, like that's games. A, that's a tough word. Hey, I friend. said it though. That's a tough word. I'm sorry about that. But now, top esports go towards the mid lane. And that's Scattle Week yet again. Teach him up, poked out. Almost dies. Thanks to Jackie Love. Away he goes. And this game was in the bag for top esports 10 minutes ago. It was a good attempt by WE. But now the inhibitor getting broken down. Almost. Top esports are still trying to charge on it. Yeah, not going to over push for this objective. Just going to go for some resets. They do have that Mountain Soul, obviously. 369 just gets stronger and stronger as the game goes on. Ooh, we do have Baron up, though. Okay. Well, you talked about Top Beast Wars not having a fast Baron, but if someone walks in from WE, which they're doing now because Top Beast Wars are resetting. Knight's getting blue. Yeah, but still. Like, I don't want to make this too dreary for WE, but even with a Baron, right, it's going to be hard breaking the base open for TS. It yeah. Like, this game is going to come down to one large team fight. Sadly, we see both, not, I guess not sadly, but sadly for me and for the viewers, we see members keep walking away from both sides. We want blood, Hysterics. Yeah, we want blood, or we at least want this game to find its conclusion at this point, because WE now walking into it again. 369, gonna be so damn tanky, he doesn't die. Knight kills Teachamar. And with that one with the large death timers, maybe that's enough. Morgan on the back line here as well. And for WE, still trying to kill 369. This Orn won't die. Cosmic Radiant's gonna come through. 369 and half health flashes away. Beishunk in the back line on top of Jackie Love. Scout of the week yet again. The word I say so much, because it always hits. I believe Jackie Love has gone into GA, but he's gonna come out with Jomung trying so hard. Missing is the only one alive, and now this game will come to its end. And Knight showing us why he's probably the best player in the LPL, having such a great game, and yeah. oh my god, Missing. Missing wants a bit of CS to finish off this game, and look, WE, change it up again. Because this game was not yours, it didn't look like your best at all. And as Top Esports run on in, we can say firmly enough that Top Esports are looking pretty damn good here. Top Esports are the team that are forcing out WE. Top Esports now move to match point here in the quarterfinals against Team WE. And TS doing a great